Hi, welcome to my channel and to the Full Monty Show. Today's guest is the IWI X95 Micro MSW. This video is going to be a very long one, so I'm just going to do the disassembly and not the reassembly. So I'm just going to go right into it. I'm going to show you how to do the field stripping first, and then after that, I'll move into the Full Monty. Um, obviously field stripping is just um, if it's not too dirty and just to maintain it uh, after each trip to the uh, range and uh, full Monty is when you wanna when it's really dirty uh, that's depends on how often you use it uh, maybe every three to five years uh, that's when you want to strip it down completely and then uh, clean it thoroughly okay so to field strip this, you have to make sure you're caulking, um, you have to caulk it, and make sure your hammer is down. So you just, like this, and just let it go. And then, there is a cross pin right here, and you don't need anything, just with your fingers, just press that, okay? And then with your nails, or actually you can still pull it, and this cross pin is captive, so you can just just make sure you put your fingers, uh, your finger uh, on the butt plate and just pull the cross pin. It's captive, you don't have to worry. And then this, this butt plate will pivot down like this. Okay. And then you can tilt the gun upside down and the whole bolt assembly will come out. Now, after that, there is two more pins, cross pins, and they're just right here. Okay, now, this you need some sort of a tool to push it. And you have to push it again from the right side to the left side, and you push it like this, like that. Just push it part way, flip it around, like this and pull them up. Now they're also captive, okay, so you don't have to worry about losing them. And then there is a BHO, bolt hole open, and it's a flap like this. You pivot down and you turn the gun upside down and the Sear hammer assembly would come out. Okay, and that's what it looks like. Now, this is as far as you go when it comes to field stripping. Okay, this is um, this is how you uh, you start cleaning. And it's um, personally, I think. Uh, the X95 falls short in the gas system, okay, because you can't reach the uh, gas port from the barrel to the gas uh, tube. And um, matter of fact, when I bought the 18 and a half inch barrel, it came with a cleaning kit, and that's not really even quite enough. And this is basically what it provided you use for the gas uh, tube. And obviously you have to slide it all the way in and uh, clean the, the gas tube this way. Okay. Obviously this did not, surplus did not come with a cleaning kit. So uh, you would use a uh, shotgun, uh, you know, shotgun brush. And uh, matter of fact, it didn't even come with a manual. So... But I recall the uh, 18 and a half inch recommends uh, to clean from the back to the front and not from the front to the back. Okay, so uh, get yourself a shotgun brush and just clean the uh, gas tube from the back to the front and then also clean the barrel um, in a similar way. Okay, and... Um, that basically uh, covers um, the uh, field stripping of the X95 Micro. 
Next, I'm going to start uh, doing the full Monty. And to do to do the full Monty on an X95, that what you need to do first is, of course, remove the the vertical grip. And I like this vertical grip because it has IWI. It's made by IWI, but it's also stamped with IWI on it. When I received this uh, rifle a few months ago, uh, they forgot to send this, or actually it didn't come with this. But uh, I uh, pointed out the distributor uh, advertisement says it does come with a vertical grip. And so Marcy was kind enough to uh, contact the distributor and pick up this uh, vertical grip on my behalf. So Marcy, thank you for that. <coughs> and uh, oh, I might as well talk about the condition and what I've read about the other people uh, condition. This, con this condition of the surplus is, I would say, uh, average. It's not badly beaten, and you would expect uh, high points to be uh, severely worn because uh, this gun, like I said, it's been uh, who knows how many shift, minimum two shift at least, uh, maybe even three, if it goes 24 hours, and it's just get handed from one guy to another or they you know they hand it in and then get reissued out, out right away and therefore obviously there's a lot of exterior wear but internally it's uh, average it's not that bad it does not reflect the uh, the wear that's on the outside so uh, the, the bore I checked the bore and it's uh, I would classify that as very good uh, in, in terms of uh, the lands and the uh, uh, it's the, the the spiral is still there. It's still pretty good, and the um, the I can also tell the uh, the wear on the bolt isn't too bad. Uh, the surface of the bolt is also okay. The carrier is okay. Uh, There's average wear, not not as bad as the outside. Now, having said that. Uh, is everybody getting the same condition? No. Uh, some of them are fairly badly beaten up. Um, so uh, I would say this is probably a little bit better than the average, I would say. And some of the wares are obviously noticeable on the optic. The high points basically is taking all the brunt of the wares here. Okay. Um, because it's also made out of aluminum, so the the black paint has uh, worn off um, in the muzzle area of course right and the blue has already uh, been worn off and the swivel same thing um, so the condition I would say this is a little bit better than average uh, but some of them are not very good um, quite a bit worn okay so the first thing you do is remove the vertical grip. Uh, that's pretty simple. And the next thing, there's a screw that's on the right side, right above the right side cocking handle. And you need a Allen wrench. And this one, yep, this is the one. Yes, you need to remove this round grip. Okay. And this is what it looks like. And it came out of this hole, just above the right side cocking handle right there. Okay. Now, once you did that, you also need to remove. also need to remove the flash hider. This is an A2 birdcage flash hider. Now I already removed it so uh, I didn't have to use a wrench but uh, um, the first time I did I had to use a wrench. And this one has a, a um, jam nut attached to it. So.
there is your A2 bird cage, and this is your germ nut, and then the swivel slides out. Okay, it was uh, pointing to the top left. You can easily switch that and make it switch it to top right okay or bottom right or bottom left whatever you choose your fancy that's how you do it as you can see because it's one of the high points it's uh, well worn off okay then you have a little uh, then you have a some sort of a, a rubberized uh, thing right here. You need to pull that up here. There it is. It's actually not rubberized because it's on uh, hot steel, but it is. Uh, it's not metal either. Okay, so it's right there, and then. Now you have to remove the the uh, pistol grip, and the pistol grip. This particular one has a slotted okay. You cannot remove the handguard the round hand guard without removing the pistol grip first because this piece right here goes into um, the receiver and then it locks this part into the receiver so there's two points up here with the screw and with the uh, pistol grip and the pistol grip also has a compartment in here there's uh, two screws you can do one on the left and you can do one on the right but I just normally just, uh, you don't need to open both of them, just one side would do. And this compartment is uh, good for uh, extra batteries, coin batteries for your optic. Okay, and this is where your uh, where your screw would be, but there's plenty of room here for uh, coin batteries and uh, whatever you want to put in here. Right there. Okay, now after that, all you need to do is slide it forward. Okay, so like this, you just Hold the round hand guard and just slide it forward. Like this. Okay. Now you have to disassemble this hand guard. This rail comes out, comes off, and here are uh, it uses this. There's a small Phillips screwdriver in here, uh, Phillips screws and you just stick this in this rail on the bottom, this whole thing is plastic so uh, it's not aluminum, it's plastic okay this uh, small Phillips screws. Now on the top side is the, uh, the foldable uh, front side and to use flip this up like that okay it's mounted on a rail and to remove the rail actually it's not mounted on, on the rail it's mounted on the round hand guard but there is a two and a half inch rail below it and it, when it folds, it folds into the rail like this. Okay, so now 
again it uses the same small Phillips screws and uh, I buggered up uh, the one on the back here and this is how small the screw is pretty damn small and I end up buggering up this one right here so I end up drilling it drilling it out and you can see it's still sticking in there and it's a uh, metric number three which uh, I can easily uh, um, replace with a hex I prefer to use hex and this back one because it's deep enough I can use a hex but the one in the front here uh, you have to use a um, uh, that type that they provided so um, now I still have to disassemble there is two more there's two more uh, screws actually two more sets of screws there's supposed to be one right here and one right here on the right similar to the one here on the left and um, what it does is it holds a plate and the plate I guess holds on to that switch so I'm gonna unscrew this it's a very small screws right there like that so there's two of those and I'm going to pull out the plate to show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is. I'm just going to leave the screw in. Oh, actually, this this um, this thing that goes um, where the barrel goes in, it comes forward. Pull it out like that. Like that. Okay. Now here's this plate I was talking about that holds on to the uh, goes on the inside. There's one on each side. I'm missing the one on the right, but this one is uh, on the left side. And I suppose a switch button slides in there, and then it runs the cable to your uh, lights and uh, and optic. Okay. So, uh, there's one more thing to disassemble, and that is the front sight. Okay, I didn't do that last time, but I think I better do it this time. And the way you disassemble this is uh, there's a pin on the left side. You drive the pin out, and this should come out. And I already started it. And uh, here, I'll just follow it up. Here it is. I'm going to use this. And I uh, made the ends pointy. And I'm going to try to drive this through. Let's see if it works. It does. Okay. I draw the pin out. And this pin is very tiny. It's, that's how tiny it is. I think I better put it on a magnet. Let's make sure we get lost. Okay, now I'm going to pull this out. And now, now before you move, remove the uh, front sight, what you should do is mark the center of where this this front side is. So when you put it back, you don't have to readjust everything. So I'm going to now remove the front side. And it's quite simple. I would assume I just unscrew it. There it is. Okay, I want to make sure that nothing falls off. Okay, there it is. Now I can see there's a there is a couple of things here that you need to know. 
but let me show you first before I go any further this is what the front sight looks like and this is the threads that goes across like this and I'm just going to screw that and make sure it stays in there I also notice I have not done this before so I'm uh, learning as I go and on the right hole where the screw came off I can see a sponge I can see a plunger so obviously it puts the tension on that it might also yes it probably also caused the clicking that you hear um, let's see if, if, I, if the plunger can be pushed out no it cannot I think the plunger comes out of this top end here let's see if I could pull it out well it's not coming out so if it's not coming out I'm just going to leave it but you guys get the idea I pressed it a couple of times it's not coming out okay so between these two posts okay there's a plate I just noticed there's a plate and it's spring loaded and here it is there's a plate I just took it off okay and below that is a spring and what that does in this plate when the uh, it basically the front post it, it pushes the front post either down or up that's what the plate and the spring is for. Okay, so we're good to there, and I gotta make sure that the plunger doesn't disappear on me, so I'm gonna have to watch this very carefully. But, uh, and that's basically it. I still have to remove this uh, dead screw that's over here. But other than that, this is your front round, or this is your round handguard. All right, so we're done there. Now, before I go removing the gas uh, system, and to remove the gas system, I have to remove the barrel. And uh, not a big deal. I've done it before, but uh, I want to do a few things that I missed with the 18 and a half inch barrel. And that is, I uh, didn't do the the mag release okay which I want to do now and to remove this mag mag catch you have to take a punch and punch it from from the top like here okay punch it down and I can see pin is sliding down. Okay, you see that pin right there? Okay, and then what you need is a pull the punch out. Get a pair of pliers and pull it. But before you do that, make sure you put your thumb on the mag catch. There it is. I pulled it out. Now I want to point out something too about the mag uh, catch pin. That there is about a quarter inch from the top. There is a half inch section that's uh, skinnier in diameter. Okay. So this diameter is the same as bound over here. But there is a half inch length section that's slightly smaller than than the top and the bottom okay so you have to be aware of that so when you put this in this quarter inch goes up okay now once that is removed your mag catch 
jumps up. Okay, this is your main catch. And there's the spring. You can see from the uh, rust on the mag spring that it hasn't been cleaned since it was produced. And I would say uh, this is the reason why I'm doing the full Monty is that it's due for a cleaning, severe cleaning. So yeah, I'll be cleaning all this uh, desert sand that's all in here and the rust, I'll have to clean all it up. So, um, so that's the man catch. Now, this piece, the BHO, comes off really easily and I've shown you how to do this uh, with the 18 and a half inch barrel. You pull the flap down and then you push it up. And then you hear a snap and then it comes off. Because of the length of the disassembling, I, I'm not going to reassemble. Okay, if you want to know how to how things go back together, you can see most of that on the 18 and a half inch barrel. But this one, uh, this full Monty, I'm just going to do the disassembling. Okay, now, how to remove these captive pins. Okay, now I need a knife. And this is the knife. Okay, below these captive pins, there is a spring right here, okay, on the left side of the pin. Slide the knife and then push it right inside, okay, at the spring. And push it down and then pull. Okay, this is rather awkward. Oh, just hang on. I might as well remove the, I should have removed the charging handles, one on each side. They just slide out. Unlike that 18 and a half inch, it has a stopper in the front here on the barrel where you have to turn left and right. And these ones just slide out. Okay. So I should have done that earlier. Okay, now I need two hands. That's why I have to put this down. Slip this into the spring, push it to the left, and then It's not going to be that easy. Oh, there it is. Okay, it came out. Okay. Now I need to show you what the pin, uh, actually the spring looks like. And the spring looks like this. And okay. And the spring looks like this. This side, the flat area is up and the round one is on the bottom. Next thing is the butt plate and you need a uh, slotted uh, skinny butt plate will come off. This is what it looks like. Now, lots of people uh, I know that uh, prefer the skinny butt plate over the fat one and they've been buying this uh, accessories and replacing them. So now you know how to do it. And there's one more thing to remove back here and that is this cross pin that held the uh, butt plate. And this is fairly easy. Use the same knife. There is again, it's a, a wire spring that locks the, the thing in like this. Slide it in. It's right here. Slide it in there like that. And just basically pull up. And there it is, right there. You just pull it back and the pin falls off.
one more thing back here that I need to show you. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do it last time. I think I just disassembled it. Uh, how to remove this, um, um, basically it's uh, this outlet. It surrounds the outlet and it's this one right here. Okay, so you're in there like that. As you can see, I'm leaving the most difficult to the, for the last, which is removing the barrel. Okay, this comes off. Okay. Once that is off, this piece that surrounds the uh, ejection port, you just slip the knife in there and just push it in. Simple as that. Okay, and it should just come out. Be careful. Push both sides in, okay, like this. Hold these two ends together, like that. Hold them together, and then pull this out. Same thing when you're putting them back in, slide it in this way. Okay. So this comes out. Now if you want to switch from one side to the other and you want your ejection port to be on the left side well of course you need to put this on the other side okay so therefore you would also need to remove this and put on the other side and this is very easy to remove you need a knife actually I'm going to start moving some of this stuff forward so I can have more workspace here moving away. Slip this to the back like this. Okay. And just just hold it in there for like this. Just hold it in. Okay. And then use a flathead screwdriver and then push it on this side. And all that's gonna do is push the plastic out. That's it. Like that. Okay. Now you can remove the knife and slide the rest of the plastic out. If you can see this, what the bo bottom part looks like, there's a slot on each side and it goes into here. Here, I'll take the plate off. Just basically then push the plate down. And the plate slides down. Now last time I had a hard time removing this plate and I still do so I'm not going to fuss around with it because I, I think I'm going to bugger up the thread so I'm not going to do it. So I want to show you what it looks like. This is this part is on the inside this is on the outside and it locks in place with this sliding over it. Okay and this is basically, it, you have to bend this a bit, okay? It won't work if you don't bend it. So slide it in like this, okay? See this part? It goes over like this, and then this slides right over it, and then it locks in place. That's how it does. It sandwiches the receiver. I didn't explain that last time with the 18 and a half, so I thought I'll explain that this time. Okay, so I'm all basically done in the back of this receiver. There's nothing more I can see that I could disassemble for you. So next I'm going to start removing is um, the barrel and to do that I need to remove this part first and then I got to start removing the barrel. I'll be back. Now before I go any further I want to show you what came out uh, off camera. It's the plunger and the spring and this is the uh, front sight uh, screw uh, pin okay came out of this round hand guard came out of this hole okay so it does slide out now I uh, I'm gonna because they're so small I don't want to lose them I'm gonna put them in a in a plastic bag just to make sure okay like that 
Okay, now I can go uh, forward and start uh, removing this uh, red dot. And to do it, I have to first remove this cross pin. And uh, I'm, I'm supposed to have um, as like a clip that goes in here. Here, if I could turn it properly, I can show you what I mean. There's a clip that usually goes right in there. But uh, in this particular case, it's missing. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> so, just basically turn this and it unscrews. And this is on the opposite side. To remove this, I have to remove the barrel. And to do that, if you remember, if you've ever seen the other, I have to, this is a lock, so I have to push that. And I'm going to use a, I'm going to use one of these to help me push that in. You have to raise this lock. It prevents it from rotating. So if you put a like a a pin of any kind and tilt it back, as you can see, it's it's now up and that's not high enough. So you would actually have to grab it and push it up further like so so you have to raise it that high to get it up and you gotta continue holding in that position and getting a wrench now this wrench I modified a hex allen wrench okay but they do sell them you don't have to modify them you, um, I think they sell them for about $30 Canadian. Not very expensive, <clears throat> but if you don't have one, you can always make one. Now, you slide it in here. Okay, right now, if you see that line, it's pointing to L. L means lock. Now, you need to turn it clockwise to the O section. Okay, make sure it's nice and firm. Continue to hold the other side, the lock is open. Otherwise, you won't be able to turn it. And also, when you're doing this, always make sure that your charging handle is uh, out. And both of these are out. Now, I'll start turning. As you can see, slowly moving. Now, I'm on what's this pin is out of that socket you can release the knife okay and now I just want to continue turning this till this white line is on the open section and it's very smooth it, and it is now on the open section okay once you've done that basically the barrel slides out well, it's supposed to. Now, I haven't done it to this rifle before, so I'm going to do it. And I also believe that everything slides out, including the red dots. So I'm going to try it. It's not sliding out. No, I think I'm going to have to tap it with a mallet. Be gentle, don't use a lot of force, and here it comes. Okay, this is the first time since production this barrel has come out. I can tell because it's quite filthy. It uh, hasn't been even done a major cleaning. Don't force it. Okay, here it comes. And there it is. 
as you can see, this red dot is mounted on the gas block. This is where your gas comes through. As you can see, it's very difficult to reach in here. Okay, but they do provide a um, a brush that helps, and I'll show it to you later actually. Uh, but right now, um, this is where the gas goes through, and actually, I'm not sure where the gas enters. This oh, right here. This is where the gas. This is where the gas enters into this uh, gas tube and let's see how far this is it's quite deep okay so it goes it goes in quite deep so the gas might even be this far I'm not quite sure where there's actually no hints where where the gas enter this gas tube I thought it was here but I could be wrong but it could be here because the depth of this is quite far. I'm going to have to look into that. So, anyway, let's move on and I'm going to remove these. And uh, to do that, turn it and unscrew it. Okay, I don't have to go all the way, I don't believe. And let me see, let me be careful and check. Yes, you don't have to do this all the way, and there it is. It comes apart. It's like a regular, it's like a regular uh, mount on any rails, uh, except this one you can't get at the nut because of the receiver is in the way, so you have to take it apart to get at the uh, the nuts okay so that's your barrel that's a 13 inch barrel take a very good look and as you can see it's quite filthy and that is your uh, chamber that needs cleaning and this doesn't work so I'm gonna have to find out how it works uh, I'm not even sure how it works. So, but and uh, if it's battery operated or what, not sure too much about this. So anyway, this is about assembly. So the next thing I want to do is remove the gas tube. So uh, if I remember correctly, from my 18 and a half inch, I just have to. There's a dust cover right here that I have to pull, push forward. And it does come out. Okay. Now, if you remember, the um, 18 and a half inch comes with only one caulking handle. And because it comes with one caulking handle, the, they have only one cutout. For, okay, this is the cutout for the caulking handle right here. And of course, with the 18 and a half inch, because it comes with one caulking handle, it'll only be for one side. I think this is a dust cover. So if you're going to switch over the caulking handle to the other side, then of course, with the 18 and a half inch, you'll have to flip it around. Uh, both sides are generally the same. Okay. But in this case, it's a dual caulking handle, so you have two spots for the caulking handle. As you can see, it needs cleaning very severely. And now I'm going to find out if the caulking tube slides out. And it does. Okay. There it is. Okay. This is what's left of the receiver and if you notice this lock is uh, in the up position and on this side it's in the O position which is open and this is what it looks like uh, obviously it needs a 
severe cleaning that has never been cleaned since production. Now, I'm not going to disassemble the trigger. I can clean, clean it well from here. And uh, just from seeing this, it's uh, pretty easy to disassemble. Okay, just punch that pin out for the trigger. And this one is like the other one to uh, remove. So I'm not going to bother doing that. And um, that's basically about it. Okay, I want to show you a little bit more about this uh, gas tube. It's a gas tube rear sight combination and it does have an attachment for a uh, magnifier uh, as I told you before the magnifier slips into this round uh, disc and then it pivots into this cavity right here and then gets locked in here this is your unlocking lever right there and this is your rear sight and it comes up like that Okay, and this is a gas tube and here I'll show you what what it where it actually sits. It sits like this on the rifle. Okay, so when you're cleaning, you're coming in from here from the back, and you're cleaning the tube. Uh, obviously, there's one thing that I complain about this uh, X95. There's no uh, gas regulator, and it should. It does get easy pretty fast, so it should have a gas regulator. It doesn't, and should have also an easy access to the uh, uh, gas port and it doesn't and it's in I gotta use a flashlight to see where the hole is let's see if I can see it okay okay scratch that I thought it was the gas hole is right here it's not and it goes further down was further down. Now, uh, I have to get a longer pin and I have to basically clean the inside. Now I can see, um, like for an average soldier, how do you get at that hole? That hole is about no bigger than an eighth or a three millimeter in diameter, right? It's right there. And you're coming in from the back. Uh, you're not going to be able to clean. And then on top of that, there is probably a turn here somewhere, and um, you, there's, if there's a clog, you're not going to be able to clean that. Okay, so obviously you'll just remove the barrel, send that in. I guess that's what that's why they make this barrel uh, removable. If it's clogged here, I'm sure they just remove the barrel, send it in uh, for have it uh, to the weapons tech to uh, unclog it, and then send it back or you know recycle it. So, that's basically it with the full Monty of the X95 Micro. As I was cleaning the gas tube, there was a lot of carbon buildup. And um, I like to point out uh, the tube itself is, is made out of uh, aluminum. So don't use any steel on it uh, to scrape off the uh, carbon. Use something soft, um, like probably another aluminum, and um, just go straight in and out. Don't go sideways, otherwise you're going to start scratching the wall. And of course, uh, try to use a shotgun uh, brush to, to clean out the carbon. There was a lot of carbon buildup on this one. Another thing I noticed, um, the uh, bolt. As you all know, if you have seen my bolt disassembly, uh, the 18 inch has the bolt B. This is a bolt B. Uh, the manual only shows bolt A. And I don't know why they haven't, uh, uh, why they didn't put the uh, disassembly of the bolt B. Uh, bolt A and bolt B is completely different. Uh, you'll note a difference is the bolt A has a slot here and this moves about back and forth about an inch freely and this bolt B uh, does not move uh, freely it's uh, right to the rear and the disassembly of the two is uh, completely different and I noticed that this uh, micro also use uh, a bolt B okay and like I said before to tell uh, the difference between bolt A and bolt B is that uh, there's no slot slot has the uh, bolt uh, 
has bolt A. Uh, if there's no slot and this is not free moving, it's bolt B. Uh, but there is a slight difference. And the difference is that uh, uh, it's in this buffer back end. As you notice, this is the 18 and a half inch. This is the micro and micro is missing this piece right here. And I think um, this is the latest version. This is probably the earliest version. And they realized without that piece up there, uh, the early model probably was without it. And you can see what happens here. Um, see here? You can see there's a slight damage to the buffer right here. What happens is that without that piece, without this piece, when it's in the receiver, this has been moving up and down. And so when a soldier is pushing this in and it's not going in because it's slightly up. And I'll show you what I mean. Here it is. They're both interchangeable, but in the receiver, you can see how much play there is. There's quite a bit of play. And because the play is there, you're trying to put the pin in, push the pin in, it won't go unless you're on the downward position. And that's where the slight damage to the buffer came from. And then they realized that was a problem. And so the next revision, they put that piece there. And now, you put that in. As you see, there's very little play because that piece is now up there and it's not going it's not going up and that's why it's a lot easier to push this in now see it so this is a new revision the one with this and if you're going to put this back in the micro make sure that this buffer is down okay there's another revision in the um, because of this little piece that's up here and I couldn't understand when I was doing the disassembly of the bolt uh, for the 18 and a half inch is that this was not removable this whole spring is not removable and I just couldn't understand why when I try to remove it it wouldn't come out and I understand that is what's stopping it from being disassembled easily is because of that piece now here the micro didn't have that piece and now I can remove the spring very easily okay this is what I do push down on the spring and there it is it comes right out and you see how easy is the disassembly I don't have to fuss around with pulling this rod out an inch and a half and all that stuff and uh, it just comes out very easily snaps right up and to put it back it's it's very simple. Hold on to the spring, pull the spring past this plastic, okay, like that, and then push it into the buffer, like this. And then it's in. Simple. But, like I said, because of that, and because the soldiers are damaging, uh, damaging the buffer, they end up putting this plastic to prevent the buffer from going up, and, and because of that, uh, the disassembly became more complicated and uh, unfortunately I don't like the the way this disassembles uh, this rod idea but in any case uh, it's here so now that is the difference so if you want to disassemble the the uh, bolt it's quite similar to the B bolt except you can remove the recoil okay so thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe